as you can see in the title screen, it, the presentation is called Pathways Fundamentals. And what I wanted to add in that is, you know, let's put the fun in fundamentals. Can I get some agreement, some thumbs up, if you guys are willing to have some fun with the fundamentals tonight? Excellent. I see some thumbs up, probably some jazz hands, hopefully not too many frowns. But the fundamentals can be a lot of fun. First, I think we have to ask ourselves, well, what, what is this process going to be like tonight? How are we going to work together with this? Well, the way that I see it is we're going to have fun, first of all, by learning, by connecting, and hence growing together. That's my promise. That's my intent to you. Part of this certainly will depend upon not only the curriculum that I present, but as well, I really am hoping for some questions. The, the one request that I put out there is during the presentation, if I could have questions related to the material that just came up, but at the end, feel free to ask questions about anything. I am new to Pathways, but I have taken a real deep dive since I did get started, and we have an all-star cast helping me out with questions if I get stuck, and that would be uh, both uh, Gwendolyn, Dr. Gwendolyn Abington, she's our Pathways Chair, and our very revered and valued Pathways Advisor, James Watt. So we have, we really have a cast of thousands here tonight, so I'm hoping you'll ask me any questions you want but let's keep it on topic just during the presentation. I hope that makes sense. Who will this webinar help? It's intended to help new Toastmasters as well as seasoned legacy members new to Pathways. As well, members with intermediate, intermediate Pathways knowledge that might be stuck at level one or level two, or even level three, but they're just not progressing beyond that. And there's probably some knowledge reasons going on there that I want to help with if we can. As well, beginning base camp managers, I think, could use some help. And that's one of the folks that we want to help tonight. Finally, there is a new role in our district called Vice President of Pathways. Uh, and in general, other Pathways helper, anybody that wants to help others in Pathways. That's the fourth person that we're wanting to help this evening. Next logical question is, well, how are we going to help everybody? First and foremost, as it says in the titles, in the title, which is the fundamentals. I think when you can get to that which is most important to accomplish the best result and the least amount of effort, that can only be helpful. Secondly, we're going to talk about what I call the two whys. I would love to share that with you. And then a really, really important aspect called one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I think that this is the glue that really makes sure that we don't leave anybody left behind. Again, what do I mean by the fundamentals? Maybe some of you have heard of the 80-20 principle. Could you raise your hand or just give me some kind of acknowledgement? Have you heard of 80-20? Some of us have. Very good. And in this context, my thinking is that there are 20% of tasks within Pathways, or 20% of information that can actually provide 80% of the value. That can really cut down on time, on labor. It, it can really, really help. Specifically, I think it can help with mental overload. This is exactly what I went through before I finally decided to dive in. I was told about this plethora of material, and it was presented so that it was good news, but in my mind, it was like a nightmare because where do I begin? What do I do? I just want to do my icebreaker speech. I was not ready to you know, check out all this information. It was way too much. And what I finally figured out, at least initially, when we're helping people that might be overloaded, we could offer less material, not more, but just make sure it's the material that they need at that moment when they will need it most. As well, I think this fundamental approach can help with confusion. What do I mean by confusion? It's, it's a person that knows a lot of details, but is really not sure how to tie all this information together. 
as soon as one task comes up, you think you know that, but then something comes up again, what do I do with that information? It just never ends. And I think what the fundamentals can do is help to integrate and tie together the knowledge that we actually already have. We probably know a lot more than we think we do. The second tool, if you will, what I call the two whys. First of all, this is the one that drives me in a massive way. I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but really asking, why are you learning this? What is your deep reason? My reason is, you know, I like to do some journaling and, and thinking. And as I was doing this, what I really came up with is it's, it's a love of Toastmasters. And it's being distraught, thinking that there could be people out there that are lost, that don't know what to do in Pathways, and hence are completely locked out. And we can no longer depend upon the legacy manuals anymore. This is the show in town. And it literally keeps me up at night worried, thinking about those people that might be locked out. But let's put it back to the positive. I think I was able to identify a real love for Toastmasters. And, and I just want to present the same opportunities that I was given over the past 10 years, some of whom are on this call. And I'm greatly, uh, I, I just want to put up my gratitude for that and, and continue it forward. Secondly, the way to ask why. Ask not only what can I do to accomplish a given task, but just in the back of your mind, ask one more question is, why was it designed this way? And what's interesting, you may or may not get the answer right away, but if you just simply ask that question, it is so cool the fact that you're going to find patterns within the user interface, you, you know, within the, the buttons and things that we click and, and information that we discover. There are certain patterns that when another question comes up, it's like, oh, okay, I understand why they're doing it. That's perfectly, yes, I don't need to read anything. I don't need to watch anything. I know exactly what's going on. First of all, could I ask everybody, does anybody have a why? And I wonder, could we put that why in the chat? In other words, why are you here? Why do you want to learn this? And Leanna, if you wouldn't mind, just share a couple of those whys that come up. James Wants says, I'm passionate for pathways. Excellent. All of it. <laughs> all in. All pathways, all in. I love it. Any Sarah, other responses? Yeah, Sarah says, I want to get the most out of my Toastmaster experience. Yes, yes, love that. And David Johnson, learn different ways to explain pathways to members who have questions. Ooh, wants to help others. I like that, yes. Clarissa wants to help her members. Uh, Gwendolyn wants to grow and serve the members. Liz is, I've loved Toastmasters for years and want to appreciate this new approach. Fabulous. Uh, and Eldred, why am I here? I still have a lot to learn about Pathways and I, how I can help others learn new education program. Excellent. Wow. Well, we've had some fabulous answers. Thank you so much. That was a real gift to me. Again, part of this thing in Toastmasters is connecting with one another. When I hear what's important to you, that's very meaningful to me. So thank you for sharing that. The final category, I think it relates to this connection that we just talked about. It's the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If I could go back in time and start over for Pathways for me, if there's one thing that I would have liked, but in a way, you know, I wouldn't be here today in the same way that I am if it had happened, but it's one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I think it is very indicative when I think of a particular example. I had a club member. Now, at the time, I was just 120 miles an hour trying to figure out my legacy requirements all the way to the end of June. So I really was not focusing on pathways, but yet I was the base camp manager, and I was actually learning through other people's projects. And I had a very smart, very talented member come to me, and I realized that he did not know anything really about pathways. He'd been doing these speeches, but he thought he was on the wrong project, and oh my God, it was like seven or eight months that he didn't know and I didn't know. and I just felt awful. But we sat down on Zoom for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. We answered all of his questions. He's totally dialed in. 
we've given him a few key principles to work with, and I just found that incredibly powerful. I did not want to give him too much at once. I could tell he was overloaded. I just wanted to help him right here, right now with his context. And it was so powerful. And I, I, I'm just so thankful that we're putting this out in the district right now. Maybe we'll have a chance to talk a little bit later, but we now have a new position called Vice President of Pathways, which is exactly that. It's your helper in your club. If someone needs help, you're there. You, you don't have to take another step. Uh, one-on-one tutoring, I cannot say enough about it. Um, and again, this wonderful panel, James alluded to it. Our uh, committee chair is here, Dr. Gwendolyn Abington. It's called the Passionate for Pathways Committee. That contact information will be included. And I personally have a goal to make sure that everybody in this audience has the information they need when they need it most. And I look at you and show you how sincere I am. I mean, I mean this to the depth of my soul. I don't even want to let one person go by. You know, we need a 24 seven hotline. Just call up if you're distressed about pathways, 1-800-PATHWAYS or something. I don't know if we can go that far, but I hope you're getting the intent. One-on-one -on -one is awesome. All right, let's talk about the people that we are intending to help here. The first one is those that are simply new Toastmasters or seasoned legacy members like I was that are new to Pathways. Priority number one. Again, there are 10,000 things that you could do, but I want to know the one thing, and I'll tell you, I think the priority number one is to get enrolled in Pathways, choose a path, do the icebreaker speech. That's what needs to be done. Why is this the case? Why am I presenting this? Because it opens up the entire Toastmasters educational system. And without it, a member is completely locked out of the Toastmasters educational system. And I hope that my point is, is clear on that. I really think that that is the number one thing that can be done. And it's wonderful that people show up and they give these speeches, but they're really not connected with the Toastmasters curriculum until this occurs. How do we accomplish this? First of all, first and foremost, I would say the one-on-one -on -one session after your club meeting or some other time that's convenient. Secondly, there is the best fast start PDF out there in the world, in my opinion, if I can just offer a little bit of praise to James on the call here. I believe he created this. And I have done a deep dive with everything out there that I have found anyway. And I've found nothing that is equally as effective as this D7 Fast Start 2.2. We're going to dive into that just a little bit here. And it is absolutely tremendous. I, I think we can really, really benefit either from using it ourselves as a new Toastmaster or sharing this with others as a teaching tool. Very good. The first, again, it just lays it out so well. First thing we do, getting started, selecting a path. Tells you what URL to go to, log in, arrows there. As we scroll down, and uh, we're going to show you how to get here. We're going to discuss how to get this PDF as well. But you can see it lays it out absolutely step by step, literally from how do I log in. Once you log in, you see the welcome screen. And it shows you how to get into Pathways from there. It's completely laid out. Click on Pathways, choose a path. And again, further notes. It just continues through choosing your path. A lot of people are selecting the online version of Basecamp. Um, I think there formerly probably was more advantage to doing the printed version, but now that you can actually look ahead in your path as well, you can even print out your path. 
I personally don't see a lot of benefit to doing the printed paths. There could be that I'm not aware of, and maybe in the questions we can talk about that. But again, I'm just going to quickly scroll down so you can see all this wonderful information. Um, pathways assessment. Due to our limited time, I'm going to go ahead and stop this particular share at this time. The, uh, the thing that really stands out to me it is just an excellent document that we can really utilize to help people. And as I get back to the, uh, to the slides that we have just been viewing. Uh, additional resources for that new Toastmaster. Now, this may not be so much for the legacy person that's been around for a while, but there is another excellent, excellent resource. And you beginners on the call today, please be aware of these two PDFs. This other one, I, I was just floored when I saw this. It's called the Navigator. The first document, all you would do to access it is you would go to d7toastmasters.org and you would click on a tab called Pathways, and you'll see that document called Fast Start version 2.2. This document, the Navigator, is within Basecamp. It can be viewed interactively, or I recommend the PDF, which I'm going to share with you right now. The reason I like the PDF is because there's nothing to search for. When you're ready for the next page, you simply go to the next page. As well, there are not only notes about the meeting roles, uh, club officers, how the meeting goes. You can also get information uh, about completing paths and, and following up with that first PDF as well. I'll just briefly show this to you. Some of you may have seen this, actually. How many have actually accessed either the quick start that we described or the navigator? Okay. It's like we got quite Lo lots of lots of people think they've seen it. Excellent, fabulous. Okay, well, very good. We are going to be cooking along. Then I'll just uh, simply say that you can go through the table of contents. It's amazing for helping new Toastmasters. You can see it there: uh, the meeting structure, the meeting roles, your officer scheduling a speech. It it is just tremendous. The next category of folks. Uh, members with intermediate pathways knowledge stuck at level one or two. Uh, the two things that I would like to share with you this evening, first one is being able to log your meeting roles that are required to pass level three. As you come up on that, you're going to notice that you may not be able to progress forward because there needs to be a place that you can log in the fact that you've been the Toastmaster, the topics master, as well as an evaluator, which you actually would have done the evaluator role in level one. And then finally, some base camp navigation that uh, I do definitely think is important. So what I'm gonna do right now is log into my own base camp just to show you a couple of these things. Do that is you can see that we're just at the welcome screen. This is we've logged into Pathways. If you've all seen those initial PDFs, I'm guessing that you know how to get here. These, this gear icon is where we access something called My Account. In my opinion, the, the most important thing you can do in My Account is exactly what we just talked about. Click on that. And what you'll notice is that these roles, now I've filled in the other roles, I just decided to do it. But as you scroll down, you'll see, for example, the Toastmaster role here. I did that on July 16th, so I filled it in. And then what I did is I filled that in and I made sure to click save afterwards. If you don't click save, it will not stay. As well, I've done the Topics Master role. The way that Pathways works is once you've done it, it just stays in there. I've done those roles many, many times. So that's the first thing that I would put out there. The other thing is there are these three excellent tabs, Home, Paths and Learning, Tutorials and Resources. If you're ever lost and not sure what to do, just click on Home. 
you're back to familiar territory at that point. And that I've, I've found extremely helpful for that. What are some other key aspects to take a look at? First of all, I think, uh, actually, before I go here, this I think is an excellent resource. Let's say if you are evaluating a club member, they are doing a given project, a given speech, but they don't have their evaluation form, but yet you want to be a good member, you want to help them with that. This is a reasonably newer development on my understanding, but all of the evaluations are right here. So you can click on speech evaluations. And if we scroll down just a little bit, every single evaluation form is in this screen. For example, James is actually evaluating my question and answer. So if he didn't have that, he could just come in here into his own Basecamp manager, uh, Basecamp account, I'm sorry, and click on question and answer session. That would bring him to that form. He could download it to his hard drive and he's in business. Now here I am, I've clicked on this. Oh my goodness, what do I do? I don't know where I am. I just click on home, I'm back to home. The other thing that we can do is really look at the extremely important aspect of paths in learning. This is absolutely critical. Now I'm doing the leadership development path as well I started on the Pathways Mentor Program. There are some terms that you might consider. If you see something called open curriculum, that means that you are about to open the curriculum of that path. And again, you remember we talked earlier not only about what do I do, but why is it designed this way? This is just a bug uh, that I'm trying to put in our ears. In other words, just plant a seed to say, wait a second, why is that there? Ah, I'm opening my curriculum. So I could you know, click on that, for example. Something else that is newer that might help a few of those you know, level one or level two people that are stuck, they might be in the impression that they can only do presentations within their level. But the reality is I'm actually, even though I'm level two working on my level three, tonight I'm working on two of my level four projects. So I could easily click there. I have not started leading the team project, but I am doing some electives. Now, if I want to say, that, okay, I see the electives, but how do I get to them? I want to view the details. Oh, wait, there's a button called View Details. You see the logic we're trying to put in there. We're trying to follow the design. And you can see another term here. And, and again, I want you to consider just putting a little mini glossary in your mind. What do these things mean? Why are they here? Create a podcast. I know that I haven't done this. It makes sense that I would have to activate that before I could do anything with it. I can't launch something that is not active. However, since I am doing this project, question and answer question, I could launch this. And I, and I hope that this logic of what we're describing is, is sinking in. And it is absolutely critical, in my opinion, to follow the logic of what it is that you're doing. The final category that I would like to help tonight is really about beginning base camp managers. Now again, I think I described to you the idea of being overloaded. That was absolutely me. The first thing I did is I noticed these three buttons that you can click on. One of them was you know, view reports, I think it's called. And I was completely lost and overwhelmed and then I thought there was something wrong when I clicked refresh and it never loaded. What's my point here? Now this could be my style, but I guess I want to just invite people to consider this. I think that the first thing that a, a person can consider as a beginning base camp manager is learn about pending requests. That's pretty easy. It's just a button that you click on. It's just called pending requests. You log in as the base camp manager, click on pending requests. You're gonna see names there, or you're not gonna see any names there. Usually one person is there, which is way better than 25. 
that might be in your club. And in my opinion, for someone that gets overloaded, this is super, super important. I don't know if I'm with kindred spirits. You guys can all handle 25 to 100 things at once. I need it to be one. And then the second thing is, okay, well, now what am I clicking on? Do I, you know, I'm a beginning base camp manager. I don't even know what I'm clicking on. Do I just click the green check mark? Well, you know, I don't know if you can learn as much, at least if I could learn as much that way. I wanted to dig a little deeper with that. And then the final category is the award submission, both in Basecamp and Club Central. So what I'm going to do is just quickly log in. I'm also a Basecamp manager. I'm just going to kind of share that with you. Again, this is probably old hat to people. Is I'm going to log out as the member. Brings me back to my home screen. Go back. Actually, I'm already in Pathways. Scroll down just a little bit. Log in as Basecamp manager. And here are those buttons. Pending requests, member progress. I, uh, I think that's a great button. I, I might avoid it myself, at least initially. Uh, a wonderful place that you might decide to go are these tutorials. Just make sure that your flash is updated. My flash was not updated. I was not able to view those. Uh, but there are some excellent tutorials in there. They're, you know, it's good material. It's good material. So pending requests, just so you can see what that looks like really quickly. Uh, this is what it is. There's nobody in my club that's waiting for a request, but their name would be here. And I could either click deny or you know accept the terminology the green the red or the green check again i'm not sure what to do i'm going to come back to home okay so now you've let's say that you've gotten a request a pending request of someone that wants to complete a level what i would recommend is james often talks about this in his videos is this very powerful aspect within the user interface which is the search button now I have found the quickest way to do this is to start typing the person's name. It is automatically logged into your club. There, are, You can take a bunch of other steps, but I found this to be the quickest way to get right there. A little respect privacy, I'm just going to type in my own name. And you can see there I am. I click there. And what this allows me to do is click on paths and learning. This is super helpful and powerful because you remember we talked about integrating the knowledge that you already have. This as a base camp manager is how you're going to do this. You already know how to navigate within paths and learning. So let's say I want to help Dave Bones, leadership development. I know what I do when I come in here. I always click on open curriculum. That's what I'll do now as base camp manager. I log in and I can access everything in the way that I would always do that. So let's recap what we've done so far and let's augment this. Let's collaborate, let's share, let's connect the best way that we can. So to recap, someone that's new to pathway, Pathways, get, first of all, first and foremost, get one-on-one -on -one help from your club VP Pathways. Please ask me questions about that VP Pathways position, which we haven't talked about that much in the district. We have our chair here that could even probably help me with that. Secondly, use James's Fast Start version 2.2, as well as the Navigator PDFs. For that other individual that we talked about that's stuck at level one or two, we talked about figuring out how to do meeting roles, to log your meeting roles so that you can pass level three. And then use the 80-20 rule to learn those top navigation tips and resources within your Basecamp account. And then finally, if you're a newer Basecamp manager, first and foremost, learn about those pending requests. If you want to learn more about the Toastmasters curriculum and how to help your members, maybe start with one at a time. And then once you're more comfortable, then go into all those other reports and use your knowledge that you already know about navigating the paths and learning tab. And then finally, if you do have questions about award submission for Basecamp and Club Central, Please ask that in the q and Be happy to help you with that. At this time, I'm going to uh, just refer you to uh, contact information. If you do have further questions, I'm going to suggest that you contact uh, my chairperson, Dr. Gwendolyn Abington. She is the chair for the Passionate for Pathways Committee. That is the email address. I'll leave it up on the screen if anyone wants to type that in. And I return. Thank you for listening sharing and collaborating. I return control of the meeting to our Toastmaster.